I'm Mark Golub, and in the news, an historic moment at the Western Wall in Jerusalem. For the first time in 26 years, a full-size Sefer Torah, a Torah scroll, was passed through an opening in the Mechitza, the dividing partition that separates the men's section from the women's section at the wall, from the men's side to the women's side. And the Torah was then read by women at the Western Wall. As you might imagine, the moment was not without controversy. The passing of the Sefer Torah from the men's section to the women's section was not formally sanctioned. It created controversy, an actual attack that resulted in injuries. So what's it all mean for the state of Israel, for the Jewish people, for American Jews? the vast majority of whom are committed to egalitarian expressions of Judaism. And I'm sure you know that in non-Orthodox synagogues throughout America, women are called to the Torah, read from the Torah, serve as rabbis and cantors and Jewish educators, and participate fully in public Jewish life just as men do. And so there's enormous support within American Jewry for similar styles of egalitarian Judaism to become the formal, official expression of Jewish life in the Jewish state of the entire Jewish people, the state of Israel. Which is why the fact of whether women are or are not permitted to read the Sefer Torah at the Western Wall is representative of a far larger issue that speaks to the way in which all expressions of Judaism, both Orthodox and non-Orthodox, will be embraced by the State of Israel. And to give us both a first-hand account of the moment the Sefer Torah was read in the women's section of the Western Wall for the very first time, and to speak to the wider issue of the progress of Jewish pluralism in the State of Israel today, I am so pleased to be joined on our phones from Jerusalem by one of my favorite people, Anat Hoffman, one of the founders of Women of the Wall, a most creative and energetic social activist who's been involved in all kinds of civic, social, and Jewish observance issues. And Anat Hoffman is the executive director of the Israel Religious Action Center affiliated with the Reform Movement here in the United States. And Anat, it's wonderful to be able to speak to you again. Shalom. Shalom to you. Thank you, Anat. So, Anat, describe for us the scene when the Sefer Torah was read in the women's section of the Western Wall. What was it like? So, we arrived on the April 20th, which is the first day of the month of Yav, the month of Israel's independence. At 7 in the morning, very crisp. Um, <clears throat> we heard the flags flapping. Uh, the whole uh, wall area was filled with uh, Israeli flags getting ready for Independence Day in four days. Um, we stood by the partition, and the men that are our supporters and helpers, they sat, st stood on the other side of the partition. They had a Torah scroll that was a public, a, a one of the hundred Torah scrolls which is at the wall for public use. What's unique about this Torah scroll is that it's it's a public one. It's one that any male of the public can avail himself for, but women are not allowed to use those public Torah scrolls. When we asked, we were not allowed to use it. So this was the first time we were actually able to stand straight and hold our heads up and be counted as part of the public. Mm -hmm. On the given moment, we opened the partition. I, I hope every partition in our hearts has a little opening that is unlocked, a little gate that can be opened. And uh, we went into the men's section and took over their Torah, not their Torah, the Torah that belongs to the State of Israel, and we moved it into the women's section. As a result of this, it was very quick in the men's section, the women have the Torah, and a few men, ultra-Orthodox, felt that they should go on a jihad, on a holy war, to get the Torah back. One of them, and you can see it in the, in the footage we took, is saying, it's my Torah. And we said, no, it's my Torah, too. And uh, <clears throat> anyway, we were able to have a full service, read from the Torah, and then 
respectfully handed back to men on the other side. Mm -hmm. As a result, the rabbi of the wall, a Rabbi Shmuel Rabinovich, was appointed for life. Um, they declared that he's going on a 24-hour fast. On Wednesday, he went on a fast, not eating for 24 hours because of the terrible sacrilege, uh, this desecration of the Torah, because women held it. And I was told that the Torah is going, that the book itself is going to go through some purging to, to make, uh, make it holy again after women held it with dignity and read it with respect, uh, the Torah is damaged and needs to be purged. Um, <clears throat> I am worried that in the next month, uh, the rabbi is going to have police all along the partition. He will instruct them that a bird can't fly over from the men's side to the women's side, let alone a Torah scroll. And he will try to put an end to the ability of women to read Torah at the holiest site of the Jewish people. Mm -hmm. And if he was listening to you or seeing you right now, I would say, Rabbi, this is a lost cause. Women will be reading Torah. You can't stop that. Mm -hmm. Girls want to have bat mitzvahs. Mm -hmm. Don't stop it. Join it. Mm -hmm. Why don't you and I think of a way to have women's services at the women's section in a way that is respectful of your tradition, that is injuring your feelings in the least possible way, but yet doesn't deny us any right, all our rights. It, it's not a zero-sum game. We could both share the holiest side of the Jewish people. That's the way to go. You can't deny half the Jewish world, and women are half of us, uh, the ability to read Torah. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's not something that he'll be able to... To do, I think it's an abuse of the power given to him by the government, mm -hmm. and I think the government, the secular government of Israel, has to say enough. Enough, Dayenu. You know, Dayenu, right? You say it so beautifully, and there's so many things I want to say in response. Um, I first want to make sure our audience understands there is no violation to the Torah if a woman touches the Torah or holds the Torah. And you know or not, there is this superstitious medieval nonsense that people think, well, a woman might be menstruating and therefore she can't touch the Torah. She will in some way transmit contagion, defilement to the Torah. I want all of our viewers to understand. Jewish law says there is no way in which you pass any kind of desecration, contagion, some kind of defilement of the Torah from a woman if she touches the Torah even when she's menstruating. It's not Jewishly possible. There is no way in which anything that was done at the Western Wall technically, formally, in terms of Jewish law, passed any kind of defilement onto any Torah that may have been part of this extraordinary moment in history. That's one thing for our audience to understand. The second thing for our audience to understand is Jewish law, specifically in the Talmud, we are told that a woman may read from the Torah. No woman is ever doing anything against Jewish law or Jewish tradition if she, in public, reads from the Torah. And the Talmud goes on to say, it's actually a Mishnah in the Talmud, goes on to say that if in the eyes of the congregation it dishonors the congregation to have a woman in a public role, then in that specific congregation they may say women don't read. But in the larger sense of Jewish law and Jewish tradition, there is no violation of any Jewish law if a woman reads from the Torah. Now it has become a tradition in the Orthodox community that women don't read from the Torah. And not only that, an Orthodox congregation has every right to create its style of Jewish observance. What it does not have the right to do, and this is what, it's not simply women of the wall, what basically are not, and all of those throughout the Jewish world who have been trying to argue for a more open, inclusive, egalitarian, honest, expression of Judaism is to say that non-Orthodox communities 
have the exact same right to create their style of worship, service, prayer, reaching out to the divine. Now, those are the first two things I want to say. And now I'm not, I want at the same time to ask you to address the question, which if an Orthodox rabbi were here, or those who are sympathetic to what the Orthodox tradition feels in Israel and around the world, they might say something to you that goes like this. There are those who argue that for Orthodox Jews, it is a serious violation of their understanding of Jewish tradition for a woman to read from the Torah in public. And that while non-Orthodox Jews should have the right and the opportunity to practice Judaism in their own ways, consistent with their own Jewish sensibilities, which includes at its core the egalitarian inclusion of women. At the same time, Natan Sharansky worked out a compromise whereby non-Orthodox Jews have a spot near Robinson's Arch at the same western wall which is on the plaza with the Mechitza, and that if women want to read the Torah at the wall, they should do it at this third section of the wall so that no offense would be experienced by the Orthodox community. And I want you to answer on that, how you would answer that approach and that question if it were addressed to you. Well, uh, the women of the wall, at the, uh, after quite a bit of anguish inside our group, we were willing to go with Sharansky for a compromise. But uh, we demanded that we will get a piece of the wall that is not the back of the bus. We didn't want to have a place for the misfits. We wanted our plaza to be monumental, respectful, inviting, and will have visibility and importance so that the State of Israel will actually offer every visitor Adoption. You can go to the left and be with the, ultra, with the ultra-Orthodox and the partition and all that. You can go to the right and be in a place that is open, pluralistic, welcoming for mixed groups and the women of the wall. We were willing to compromise, even though our group was completely devoted to the women's section. We were willing to make a huge compromise for Sharansky and for the Jewish world and for peace in the family and move to another plaza. But we demanded, you know, you can't say to Mrs. Rosa Parks, look, the bus goes from A to B. Does it really matter if you sit in the front or you sit in the back? Uh, if you really want to move from A to B, then sit where we tell you. We admire Rosa Parks for sitting in the front of the bus because it does matter where you sit. We want a, the State of Israel to say, uh, we will provide you with a respectable place. And so far, that's not what Sharansky mm -hmm. was able to deliver. Mm -hmm. Not that he didn't want to. He wanted to. The investment of the state was very, very poor. And uh, what we call the sun deck that they erected there is 20 meters away from the wall. What, what's the point in going to the wall if you're 20 meters away from it? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You can't, uh, even though I can throw a rock, I can't throw a note. 20 meters into the wall, people Absolutely. want to come and touch it, no? Abso Absolutely. So our sun deck is, is elevated 20 meters away from it. No. And besides, you know what? The sun deck was erected without talking to us. You want to solve an issue? Talk to us. We are smart, willing people. We're, we want to have, find a solution. As for your explanation about the halacha, halacha regarding the Jewish law regarding women reading Torah, this is all well and good, but Mark, Israel is not a, so far, a theocracy. Jewish law is not what runs Israel. Israel is run according to its own laws. And to segregate in the public sphere and to deny women their right in the public sphere is against the law. Of course. Of so course. what's happening now is that there are zero Torah scrolls in the women's section, 100 Torah scrolls in the men's section, when a woman wants to get one of those Torah scrolls, uh, the man that helped her is, is uh, uh, take, detained in the police, uh, charged with a char banned from the wall for, for a while, and is charged. What is he charged with? What did he do? 
He is charged of betting and uh, abetting and aiding. What's it called in English? Aiding and abetting. Correct. <laughs> in giving a tour to women. What's wrong with that? Yes. There is a solution to everything. Mark, if the rabbi of the wall was now on the phone, he's never, he's never talked to me in his life, but if he had, I would say, Rabbi, we can come to a solution. Here's a solution. Instead of sharing space, let's share time. Let's decide that women of the wall can pray at a particular time, advertise it, and make sure that people whose feelings get injured from that, they should know that on this hour at at, at Rosh Chodesh, on New Month, they shouldn't come. We will adhere to that. Time sharing has always been the Jewish way. Jews have built structures in time, not structures in space. Mm -hmm. So I'm willing to time share. Mm -hmm. I'm willing to find any possible way to stand in a far away from the partition. To uh, We will bend over backwards mm -hmm. to live happily and harmoniously with everybody else at the wall. But we will not be silent. And we will not be thrown out of there, and we will not go to jail for reading Torah. Mm -hmm. I love every single thing you say. By the way, I think the the analogy of Rosa Parks in the front of the bus, and if somebody had said, "What's the difference where you sit? You'll get where you're going," is a very apt analogy. I hope every viewer understands the power of what you've said. And if you haven't seen this third section that was created by Sharansky in the State of Israel, it really has none of the grandeur, power, or immediacy of the Western Wall Plaza, which everyone imagines in their mind. And virtually every Jew who has traveled to Israel has had an opportunity to come and stand at the Western Wall. And it, at the moment, it is run as if it were an Orthodox shul with a machitza that separates the men and the women. And a not is, in my view, in my view, and that is a thousand percent correct, that while the compromise of a third section of the wall seemed to make sense, it only would make sense if it had the emotional power, the beauty, the grandeur, the presence, that the piece of the wall that you and I imagine whenever we think of the Western Wall were, had been created in that way, and it wasn't, and it really is, quite honestly, a second-class place to be. And that, that, that goes against the entire spirit of what the compromise was meant to be and what Anat is trying to say here. And there's no question that it's the Western Wall that everyone knows that has the, the it's not simply the hexer, it's not simply the imprimatur of Jewish tradition, but it has the power of Jewish tradition. And not if there were a if there had been a compromise where on the plaza, instead of the wall being divided into two sections, it had been divided into three sections, where there was a men's section, a women's section, and then a progressive section of an egalitarian nature. But it was right at the western wall beneath the you know, beneath the Temple Mount, would that have also been acceptable to you? It would have been acceptable, yes. But there was no chance of that happening, was there? No, there was a chance. I think we were uh, uh, quite close to what coming happened? up with it. What happened? But, uh, I think that it's possible. Jews can solve these, this problem. There is, there is plenty of wall. The wall is over 400 meters long. Sixty meters are now in one plaza, but we could, we could, we could. There is a potential to find a solution to this. Yes. But what is required is that all sides realize that finding a solution will is is a divine challenge, and that every compromise is is appreciated, and that I want to have a place of choice. I want an Israeli to come to the wall, and make a choice. Do I want to stand on a plastic chair? as a woman, and try to look at my bar mitzvah boy with a telescope far away at the men's section? Or do I want to stand next to my bar mitzvah boy? I want Israelis to be faced with that choice and may the best plaza win. Mm. I want us to compete with each other on giving services and openness and helpfulness to everyone who visits. Yes. I think that kind of competition is good. It's good for, the, for everybody. Absolutely. Uh, right now, it's no competition. Ours looks like I mean, the southern wall looks like an archaeological dig yes. with a sun deck in the middle. 
and and the plaza uh, that is run to the tune of over 50 million shekel of government money looks like a, like a holy place. Yes. I want both to be at the equal, and then I will compromise on separate but equal. Exactly. By the way, Anat, what progress do you feel has been made in general when it comes to institutionalized respect for the non-Orthodox Jewish community of Israel and the extent to which non-Orthodox rabbis and non-Orthodox institutions, synagogues, etc., are receiving the same kind of subsidies which Orthodox institutions receive? Well, the first thing that is great progress is that all Reform and conservative conversions around the world are recognized in Israel for purposes of Aliyah. I'm very proud of this case. We won this. And uh, just last Thursday, 19 new, new Israelis, all converts, all black, uh, six from Ethiopia, and 13, 13 from Kansas City were uh, converted by a Reform rabbi, Rabbi Art Nemetov. Uh, they were all, they received their new identification card and their Israeli passports before Independence Day. They were Israelis on Independence Day. How so wonderful. I'm sorry it had to go all the way to the Supreme Court, but we did win for all of them, and uh, the conversion is a great place of success. We have not yet won all the case, but at least every convert that's listening to you right now should know that they are welcome with open arms when it comes to Israel and can make Aliyah become an Israeli uh, right, right away. Another place is that we were able to get funding for regional rabbis, reform and conservative rabbis in regional councils in Israel, get paid by the government. True, we're not getting paid through the Ministry of Religious Affairs. We're getting paid through sports and culture. But still, we are getting paid all the, way, all the same. We're called rabbis, and we are uh, getting 100% salary. Uh, we, are, we built... Seven synagogues at state expense. That is a reform and conservative synagogue that says on the front, built by the Ministry of Building, Housing. However, there are thousands of synagogues built in Israel, and we have seven, well, the numbers. I think one of the great achievements is that 8% of Israelis say they would rather have a reform or conservative rabbi in their life, and that is a that is a high percentage that shows that we're making headway in Israel. Mm -hmm. That Israelis, even though all religious services are by, by the government are only Orthodox, uh, we were able through, you know, uh, almost 100 congregations between the Reform and Conservative Movement to show Israelis something that is extremely subversive. There is more than one way to be Jewish. Yes. Orthodoxy is not for everybody. Orthodoxy is a minority in Israel. Orthodoxy is a minority in the Jewish world. But it holds a lot of political power in Israel. And sadly, it is abusing that political power and is even corrupt. I think it's good for Orthodoxy to have some healthy competition. And it's good for Judaism. And it's good for Israel. And we should try to fight the Jewish, the Orthodox monopoly, even if we're Orthodox, we should fight it. Yes. What do you say to yourself about Jewish life in general when you're in the midst of this ongoing battle? Look, I come from, and we all do, from a healthy tradition of argument and discourse over conflict. Uh, if you look at the Bible from this perspective, think of what the first Jew, Abraham, does uh, as he meets the brand-new God, he immediately starts an argument over how many just people can be in Sodom. Fifty, forty, he argues with God as if it's a used car salesman over a price. And then it goes on with the prophets arguing with God, and the prophets arguing with the kings, and Moses wants to resign, and God wants to resign, and everybody. It's a lot of, a lot of argument in our tradition. The Talmud is one long argument. They're arguing over everything, about eggs, about chicken, about women, about hair, about you name it, they have arguments. And Judaism has always had the encouragement of people to cast doubt. The whole Seder is to encourage children to ask hard questions. In, in a, in, before the wedding, we encourage the bride and the groom to, ask, to make a, a, something new, to question what other people said, to... Uh, to give a good kick in the ass what the tradition is. 
we are always happy to hear new stuff. And it all came to an end in Israel when instead of having an argument, a good, healthy argument, we've given full and complete monopoly to one stream of Judaism, and the argument ended. Mm -hmm. They're the only ones getting funding. They're the only ones getting recognition. And it's bad for them. It's bad for Judaism. So I think it's just a hiccup in Jewish history that we have lost the ability to argue Jewish, Jewish uh, Judaism in Israel. And I think you guys, you in the diaspora, have a critical role here to push Israel to recognize that there is more than one way to be Jewish. I think the, the Orthodox are supporting their own in Israel in very strong ways. And I think liberal Jews and liberal Orthodox Jews should support their own. God knows there's so many NGOs here that are trying, non-government organizations that are trying their best to, to have a, a, a variety of pluralism in, in Israel, mm -hmm. diversity of Jewish mm -hmm. experiences. Why can't Israel be the, the club med of the Jewish soul, the, the Disneyland of the Jews? We should, we should demand that. And I think you should support those organizations in Israel that are challenging the monopoly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Anat, I love you so much, and I love talking to you, and I love having the opportunity to share your thoughts with our viewers. You continue to do just amazing, wonderful work. Kol Tuva to you. And again, when you're in the United States, you have to come in studio, and we have to, to continue our discussion in person. Okay. Tada ba. Good night. Thank you. The thoughts of Anat Hoffman, Executive Director of the Israel Religious Action Center. And again, she's most well known for all her work as founder of Women of the Wall. And the issue of religious pluralism in Israel, egalitarian forms of Jewish life, which include women, as typified by American Jewish life, remains a contentious issue in Israel. It's a pity. It seems so unnecessary. We are one people. Every expression of Judaism should be seen as an authentic reflection of the covenant made at Sinai. And how lovely it would be if the Orthodox in Israel could observe Judaism in their way and non-Orthodox Jews in Israel could also be free to observe Judaism in their way. And that's what we all should hope for. My thanks as always to our fabulous director Sloan Copeland who's getting married and Sloan, all of us wish you all the best. You and Jessica make a spectacular couple, have a wonderful ceremony and a wonderful honeymoon, and I know you're going to have a wonderful, wonderful life together. Thanks also to our chief engineer and program coordinator, Serge Goldberg, to JBS associate director, Dara Golub, and to the producer of this edition of In the News, Ron Jacobson. Until the next time, I'm Mark Golub. Be well, my friends. We would be pleased to send a complimentary DVD of this program to anyone who wishes to support JBS, the Jewish Broadcasting Service, with a tax-deductible gift of $36, double high or more, to the nonprofit organization Jewish Education in Media. Simply visit the JBS homepage and click on the Donate button to make a donation by PayPal or your credit card. And please, indicate the program for which you would like a DVD. Or you can send your tax-deductible check made out to GEM, to GEM, Post Office Box 180, Riverdale Station, Bronx, New York, 10471. And again, please remember to indicate which program you would like to receive with our compliments. And we thank you for your kind support.